Welcome back to a new Marcus Maths video. Today we are returning back to SAT practice um, and we are going to be going over our full trigonometry and geometry unit, um, and the advanced version uh, for the SAT. There are about six or eight of these skills and I'm going to be doing a video over every single one of these. This will be the first uh, math review in a series. We're going to completely finish all the advanced difficulty level of the trigonometry questions and also of the advanced math questions because and if you look in my uh, calendar or uh, well if you look on my channel pages inside of uh, YouTube you can see that I've gone over all the skills for algebra and um, the data analysis two units, uh, both beginner, medium, and difficult. Now I'm just going to be going over the diff uh, the advanced difficulty level inside of Khan Academy. We're going to be starting with this trigonometry and geometry unit. And let's go ahead and get started. Now if you want to see more SAT content, there will be an SAT reading video up tomorrow. So definitely stay tuned for that. We're going to be starting SAT reading practice as well. But uh, for the time being, let's go ahead and get started with this uh, quiz that we're going to be going over today. It's going to be, we're going to be looking at area and volume advanced difficulty levels. So expect to be doing a lot of area, especially of circles, as we can see with this first question. But we're going to be going over a variety of figures. Okay, taking a look at this first one. Uh, Coney, a painter, painted a circular helicopter landing pad one color. So maybe drawing diagrams can actually help us here. So we have a circular. My bad, we can change the shape to this. All right, we have a circular landing pad. This is yellow. She uh, Next, she painted a over a three meter radius circle in the center in a different color. So let's change the color. Let's say green. And then uh, we have another circle in the center. And this, very important to recognize, this has a three meter radius. So we can set our radius, which is half of our diameter, equal to three. If the second coat of paint covered an area half the size of the, th of the first coat, which of the following is most likely the radius of the landing pad? So we're looking to find the radius of the yellow circle. Um, first of all, let's find the area of the green circle and then double that and that will give us the area of the yellow circle if the uh, second coat of paint covered an area half the size of the first coat. So our green circle is half the area of the yellow circle. Let's go ahead and find that. We know that the area of a circle formula, I believe this is on the SAT reference sheet, um, but it is area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. We can substitute 3 in for our, our r. We have uh, pi times 3 squared. 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 9, so our area is just 9 pi. If this is half the area of the yellow circle, the yellow circle's area is equal to 18 pi. So we are dealing with 18 pi. This is the area of the yellow circle, but that's not our answer. We need to find the radius of this yellow circle, the radius of the landing pad. So we're going to set 18 pi equal to pi r squared, and we're going to solve for r. So our first step is to uh, in order to isolate the r squared, we're going to divide both sides by pi. Cancels out on our right side, cancels out on our left side. And we have r squared is equal to 18. Now, r, if r squared is equal to 18, remember we're not trying to find an exact answer, we're trying to find most nearly. We're going to take the square root of both sides. And as we should know, the square root of 18 is most close to the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 is equal to 4. Uh, square root of 36 would be 6, square root of 9 would be 3, square root of 4 would be 2. So uh, 4 is definitely the most close to our square root of 18. If we found the decimal, it would be 4.1 or 4.2 uh, to equal the square root of 18. So the value that is most nearly the radius of the landing pad is equal to 4 meters. Okay, let's take a look at the second question. The volume of the solid is s pi cubic units, where s is a constant. What is the value of S? So we're trying to find the volume of the solid. And as we can see, the volume of the solid is made up by two figures. We have a cylinder, and then we have a cone. Now, it's important to know the volume of both of these figures. These may be on the SAT reference sheet, um, but I know these formulas. So first of all, we have the volume of a cone. This is V equals one-third pi 
R squared H. And then we have our volume of a cylinder. Volume of a cylinder is equal to, uh, well, is V equals pi R squared H. Okay, we have the volume of these two figures, and as we're given here, we um, uh, do, I, do actually have the radius of the two and the heights of the two. So first, let's start with the volume of the cylinder. We're going to use this formula right here. Our radius of our cylinder is equal to 2. Our height is equal to 3. So now we just have to do 2 to the power of 2 times 3 times pi. 2 to the power of 2 is 4 times 3 is 12 times pi is 12 pi. So the volume of our cylinder is 12 pi. We're going to note of this uh, figure for later. Now we're going to find the volume of our cone. For our cone, the radius is still equal to 2, and our height is equal to 4 this time. We have to do 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. 4 times 4, which is 16. And that's 16 times 1 third, which is 16 over 3 pi. So the volume of our cone is 16 over 3 pi. Now at this point, we have the volume of our cone and the volume of the cylinder. To find the volume of the solid shown, we're going to have to add these two together. So we're going to do 16 over 3 pi plus 12 pi. In order to do fraction addition, we're going to need to find common denominator. So we can write 12 as 12 over 1 pi. And we can see the common denominator here is going to be 3. In order to find the common denominator of 3, we're going to multiply the second fraction by 3 in both the numerator and denominator. And we are left with... 16 over 3 pi plus 36 over 3 pi. And then from here, denominator is going to remain 3. We're going to still have our pi. And now we're going to add 16 and 36. Now 16 plus 36 is equal to 52. So the, uh, our volume of our solid is equal to 52 over 3 pi. And they are just asking for s, where s is the constant in front of the pi. So we're going to look at our answer. We're just going to take the constant in front of the pi as, a, as the value of s, which is 52 over 3. And that is the correct answer for this question. On to question number 3, we have the Pyramid of Khufu is one of the great pyramids of Giza. The right pyramid, very important, so you can see that right angle and this right triangle, has a square base with... Uh, base lengths of 230 meters are shown. The original vertical height of the pyramid is believed to have been approximately 146.5 meters. Due to erosion, the height is now approximately 139 meters. If the base area of the pyramid did not change, what is the difference between the volume of the pyramid now and the original volume of the pyramid in cubic meters? So, uh, very important, we're going to find the volume of the two, and then we're going to subtract them from each other. That is indeed the difference. Now, it's very important to know the area of a pyramid is equal to the area of the base, uppercase B, uh, and the height divided by 3. Very similar to um, our formula for the, for the cylinder, but, this, but the height is just divided by 3, because uh, the area of the base for the cylinder is pi r squared, area for the base of a, a square pyramid like this is just 230 squared. Okay, so we have our area. We're going to find the area of a pyramid 1 with a height of 146.5. We're going to find the area of pyramid 2. So our first step, we need to know 230 squared. Now, I don't know this off the top of my head. I'm just going to write both of these as an expression. So we have 230 squared um, times 146.5 over 3 and this is we'll find the area of our first pyramid now the area of our second period the area of our second pyramid is 230 squared times our new height of 139 over 3 remember the square base didn't change that's why that 230 is going to remain the same and just so you guys know why we're doing 230 squared the area of a square is simply the side length to the power of 2 now, from here, we're going to uh, find out these values and then subtract them from each other. So we're going to have to use a calculator. Uh, don't worry, a calculator is indeed provided in the SAT. So we're going to go ahead and use Desmos for this question. As we can see here, by typing in both of our formulas, we have these two values, 2,583,000 and 2,451,000. Uh, now, the question said to find the difference between the two volumes, we are just going to subtract the two values from each other. So, once we subtract, 
we are left with 132,261, and these will be in cubic units. Um, and that is obviously answer choice B here. Okay, on to our last question. A cylinder and sphere have equal volumes and radii of equal length. If the height of the cylinder is 8 centimeters, then what is the length of the radius of each shape in centimeters? So first of all, we're going to find the volume formula for cylinders and spheres. We already used the volume formula for a cylinder, that is pi r squared h. Now it is also very important to find uh, to know the volume formula of a sphere, and that is actually 4 thirds pi r to the power of 3. So this is a little bit different. Uh, once again, all these volume formulas are pretty important to know of. Okay, we are given that the radius are equal, so we can keep it as r on both sides. And uh, the height of the cylinder is equal to 8. So that means the volume of our cylinder side is 8 pi r squared. We need to find the value of r. So our first step, we're just going to um, isolate, well, we're just going to solve this equation for r. Okay, our first step, we're going to simply divide both sides by pi. They cancel out. So now we have 4 thirds r to the power of 3 equals 8 r to the power of 3 equals 8 r to the power of 2. And from here, we're going to multiply both sides by 3 over 4. And we will be left with r to the power of 3 is equal to 6 r squared, of course. Uh, 8 times 3 over 4 is equal to 6. And now we're going to divide both sides by r squared. If you divide both sides by r squared, you are left with r to the power of 3 divided by r to the power of 2. When we, and when you divide um, numbers with the same base, the exponents subtract. So we subtract the exponents from each other. We're left with r to the power of 1, which is equal to r. And r is equal to 6. So the length of the radius of each shape in centimeters is 6. And we could double check by substituting back in. 6 squared is 36. 36 times 8. We can do that over here. 36 times 8, 48. 24 plus 4 is 288. So we're left of 288 pi on our right side. Now let's check our left side. 6 uh, to the power of 3 is 216. So then we multiply 216 by 4 and then divide by 3. So multiply by 4, 2, 6, 8, and then divide by 3. 3 goes into 864. 2 times 6 sub subtract, we get 26. 3 goes into 26 8 times, we get 24. And then we subtract, then we get 24 again. 3 goes into 24 8 times. So we do indeed get 288 on both sides. The volumes are equal. The radiuses are equal. The height of the cylinder is 8 centimeters. All constraints of the question have been fulfilled. 6 is the correct answer. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video going over area and volume inside the trigonometry and geometry unit in Khan Academy Digital SAT Math Practice. I'll see you tomorrow when we go over our first reading video. Uh, and then we will resume with our calculus practice on Monday. I'll see you guys then. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already, and comment if you have any questions or suggestions. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.